Father God in heaven, we thank you for this morning, Heavenly Father. This morning where you've allowed us to come here and gather today. Fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask right now that you would use me as a willing vessel to bring a message today I feel is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Father, you always had said and never had promised that things would be easy, that things would consistently be joyful. So, Father, we ask that you just meet everybody here today, wherever they are. Thank you for allowing us to lay our yoke upon you so that you can make our burdens light. Father, you're an awesome and great God, creator of all. Nothing's too big for you, so we ask that you just sit here. Allow this message to penetrate the hearts, souls, and spirits and fall upon the ears that can receive this message. Move forward from here. I ask that this message have the intention of giving you the glory. So from here, moving forward, I ask that you remove me. Speak to me. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. This is a, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today, as it's always an honor and a privilege to be here to spread the word of God. Today's not going to be an easy message for me, but it's one that I must give, as you heard in my prayer, as I felt it would be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Mark had asked me back in January if I would preach today on the 15th. And I graciously accepted it. But then a couple of months after that, as I was in prayer, as most of you know, those of you that know me, my prayer room is the steam room, the Lassa Club. <laughs> I love that room. It's, and if you listen to some of uh, the prayer warriors that are in there, they say that's our, the, the, the uh, steam room ministry. We meet lots of Christians in there and we just say our prayers. But it hit me in there in time of prayer Holy Spirit nudged and prompted me and moved me and told me that I was supposed to speak on some of the things that I'm going through some trials and tribulations and I didn't if I, I didn't want to do it you know the, because there's a part of me that wants everyone to think that everything's okay Everything's all right. I thought, and I know, I know there's some people in here that get that. Because, see, we can sometimes come to church, leave all that behind, walk through the sanctuary doors, and put on that facade that everything's great. I've done it. But to tell you the honest truth, there's a lot of people that know some of the circumstances, and everything's not always great. But once I get through that door, it gets good. And I can smile. And it's, that, it's just the, the feeling and the sense of the Holy Spirit that wraps around me and makes everything all right. So see, vocationally, I speak to a population of people where things aren't all right. There's lots of struggles. There's lots of trials. There's lots of despair. And it's a little easier to talk about those things when they wear that outwardly like that. It's not quite as comfortable when I'm speaking to a congregation that's composed and kept and has the appearance that everything's fine. But I know biblically it says there's going to be those times. So I know that's not the case. So if you would, join me in scripture. We're going to go to 1 Peter or follow along on the screen. I'd like to open up with 1 Peter 3, 15 through 16. It says, but in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, 
keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against you good behavior and Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Be prepared to give an answer. The Amplified Bible's version says, be prepared to give an account. So the Spirit nudged me and told me, Ron, give your account. Now I'm going to give an account. And as I said, this isn't exactly an easy, comfortable thing to do because there's an, my account consists of a testimony that includes some despair. Periods of despair. It includes times of trials and tribulations. It includes times of pain. And the thing is, is that I feel as if I was called to speak on that today because I had no idea what the theme was going to be this week. And miraculously so, as time moved on, I began to see that the theme was about community and the body of Christ. And that the direct parallel was, it's no coincidence. The Spirit knew what I was, the Spirit knew what the theme was going to be. The Spirit also knew what these songs were going to be because those weren't planned. But we have those burdens. He says, cast those burdens down. So I'm going to go back and set the stage because in September 18th, 2016, I was ordained here. Be three days, it'll be three years. And I knew that that was the day that I officially answered the call. Or as I refer to it, got out of the bleachers and got in the game. And that was a tough choice because I had a very comfortable relationship with God, felt he was there for me, and that everything was going good and that'd be enough. Why can't I leave it there? But that's not what God called me to do. And fortunately, I know that God doesn't call the qualified, but he qualifies the called. Sometimes those qualifications come with some trials and tribulations. Sometimes it comes with some pressure. Sometimes it comes with some pain. And I know for the last three years, there's been some great times as well as for everybody, but there's been some troubling times as well as with everybody, but it's okay. And I can stand here and talk about it because I know that I worship a great God, an almighty God that's capable of all things, miracles. There's nothing too big for God. The maker of all things, the creator of all things, the judge of all men, the one that spoke universe and earth into existence, the one that said, let there be light and there was light. That's the God we serve. There's nothing too big for God. So these trials and tribulations, I get that. Before I move on, I have to make a confession. I'm going to let you in on a secret. Like I said, for the last three years, I've been ordained, and I've spoke he here at Rabbit Creek three times previously. My sister-in-law is a pastor of the church. I've spoken there several times. I've spoken and brought the message at the church in which I grew up with. It was a Methodist church. I've spoken there several times. And... and Anytime that I've prepared a message, I've put on this robe. My kids got me this robe for Christmas, and I just, I don't, I'm not quite sure how it became a tradition, but it has. But I put on this robe, and I sit at my desk and prepare the message. Well, I shared with my wife a couple of months ago, I said, Mark asked me to bring the message on September 15th, her being a comedian she likes to be. She says, are you going you gonna to put on the robe? I looked at her, and I'm like, I, I wasn't even aware this, that, that she picked up on that. I mean, I didn't thought it was anything unusual. So I smirked at her and smiled and said, well, yes, probably so. So earlier this week, as I'm preparing the message, I put on my robe. See, it's a, it's a nice big, soft, warm, burgundy 
my favorite color, warm, soothing robe. And so it, it just must put me in that zone. So when I was preparing the message, I decided to take a break and go to the kitchen to get a cup of hot tea. Aware that she knows now, I tried to do it more stealth-like. So I left my desk, passed through the living room, heading to the kitchen, and I heard this snide voice from out of nowhere say, what you wearing? <laughs> all, all I could do was look at her and smile. Well, see, in my home right now, we have a set of circumstances, and we're in a place right now where we just have to, we have to find humor at every opportunity whenever we can. So I chuckled at that. But I also knew that, as I thought that was a secret, if my wife was aware of that, it wouldn't remain a secret for long. That's just how she is. So I thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> so on September 18, 2016, I was ordained. And I knew that right then that that wouldn't be without opposition. I, I, I'm aware and I knew that there would be opposition because of spiritual warfare. It says in Ephesians 6.12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, as believers in Christ were God's children, heirs to the throne. We weren't promised to be carefree or worry-free or trouble-free. Quite the contrary. Just as Paul was telling the Corinthians, be steadfast. You'll be, you'll be persecuted. There'll be trials and tribulations. But you don't have to do this alone. We don't have to do this alone. We have the body of Christ. We as the body of Christ, a community. Outwardly, we can do this together. We can do this through small group, life groups and, and be there for our brothers and sisters in Christ. So in those times of trials and tribulations, just take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Follow with me in Philippians 4, 4 through 6. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Let's take a look at that. Now, this here is probably, as I, as, as I was saying before, I'm firm in my belief. I'm firm in my relationship. And in 2013, I had been diagnosed with cancer. And it didn't shape me. I had the, I had the, the, the body of Christ and the community of our small group at the time to help pray, us, to help pray me through. See, but I think it's a little harder when it's someone other than yourself. It was for me. Because, see, my bags are packed and I'm ready to go. So it didn't trouble me. And the thing about that prayer, I'm going to just share this because I know that sometimes there's a little confusion that we can pray and sometimes we don't get the answers we want. Sometimes we don't get it timely as we want. But it says do not be anxious. Sometimes we get anxious. Sometimes I get anxious. Imagine, I believe it was Hurricane Maria that was heading for the coast of Miami. Now, I've done four mission trips in Miami, so I felt, I felt that I took it upon myself to pray, to pray for the people in Miami to be protected. I prayed and prayed unceasingly 
and the storm veered away to the other city, which was devastated. Thank you, Father, for answering my prayers, I thought to myself. But what about the people that were in that other city that were praying also? How does that work? How does God answer one person's prayer but not the other? Well, see, I know that as long as we pray, he, he answers according to his will. And he promises and he says in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good for those that are called according to his purpose. Now, he didn't say it was going to feel good. He just said it worked out for the good. So, see, sometimes we have to just be comfortable with the answer of our prayer, understanding that it's God's sovereign will. How does that affect us? I tell you now, I also, in 2013, as we were praying in our men's group over my cancer situation, there was a brother in the same group praying over his daughter's cancer situation. We're all praying together. Coming at the end of July, I was healed. Can't remember the exact month, but my brother's daughter, at a very young age, succumbed to her condition. I had a little guilt, to tell you the truth about that. Why did I survive and she didn't? But who am I to question God's sovereign plan? How can we do that? All we have to do is trust and have faith. Now, I know that here's where this story or this testimony or this account gets a little challenging. Because, see, my wife was diagnosed with a non-curable condition called cerebellar ataxia type 2. It affects her, her balance, coordination, is degenerative, is progressive. And I find myself praying, and that one, that person that always said that he was firm in his belief, faith was strong, all of a sudden, and I knew that, and I still know that. I know that God is able to do miracles. I know that he's able to move mountains. Sometimes we just need to pray to get over that mountain, to have the strength to get over that mountain, because maybe that mountain's not supposed to move. So with my wife's condition like that, I'm praying, and I know God's able to cure her, to perform those many miracles that he always does. But my mind starts to question, but will he? I've never been in that place before, ever. I said, I know he's capable, and I'm praying, but will he? Now, see, like I said, when it's me or us, it's not quite as maybe severe. But when it's your loved one, a child, a spouse, a relative, it takes on a different meaning. It did for me. It does for me. So I was questioned. But see, this is how... The sanctification process is working for me and how God, I believe, is developing and preparing me for what's next. Because, see, in these trials and tribulations and moments of despair, there's pain, there's pressure, there's fear. I mean, there's those times. There's even those times, fleeting as they may be, you just want to give up. Praise God, they're fleeting. So I visited a friend, and he said, and I was talking about the situation. I says, I know he can heal my wife, but will he? He says, how's your faith? I said, my faith is strong. He said again, how's your faith? I said, it's strong. He says, how's your faith regardless of the outcome? I had to think about it. I had to think about it for a while. See, because we can get caught up, I can get caught up in this earthly existence, knowing that I'm still here to serve, but I can also sometimes 
not be cognizant. But this isn't home. This isn't home. It's not supposed to be joyous all the time. It's not meant to be trouble-free, trial-free. We're just passing through. This isn't home. So I had to say to myself, and I got to a place, and this is how we developed, this is how I developed, is that I had to shift my thinking and say that despite what happens, I know that all things work together for the good and that everything will be all right. Amen? No matter what happens, no matter what we're going through, no matter what you're going through, there's time. Because, see, this message, I don't understand that this message is for everybody. Because everybody in here has either gone through something, going through something, or will go through something. And for those that haven't gone through something, brace yourself because it's coming. But the thing by design is that as we get through those times... As God is the comforter of all, as we get through those times, we get to be a comfort to others. So, see, don't hold back. Have a little more transparency. And I'm not suggesting that you find a congregation or a form of 300 people and tell everybody your story because this isn't easy. <laughs> but, but, but don't try to carry it around. Don't bury your feelings. Don't bury those burdens. Lean on the community, the body of Christ, your brothers and sisters, and lay your burdens upon them as if you're laying them upon God. Because God has the ability to work through all of us. And that's what we're here for, church. The body of Christ. To continue to encourage, to continue to lift each other up. Now, as I've gotten through cancer, I have the ability to share that comfort with others. And I also know that it's not over. That mountain was moved, but the one I'm presently facing may not be moved. So I pray to the Holy Spirit. I pray for the strength to make it through this trial. I pray for the strength to get through the storm. Just as Jesus was laying in the boat, disciples were panicking because the waters were rough, and they were wondering, how are you asleep? No worry. Jesus awoke and said, peace be still. See, we worship a God that is able, capable and able of all things. Please come with me, follow me in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. It says, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father and compassion and the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all trouble so that we can comfort those, those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. We're there for each other. We are, we're designed to be there for each other, but only if we share our, our, our trials and tribulations. Now, I'm not sure if it's an aging parent, a broken relationship, a strained marriage, a loss of job, a transfer of employment. We experience these things. It's okay. There's pressure. There's pain. We're stretched. John Maxwell says in order to be successful and get there, sometimes we have to be stretched. So when you're going through those painful times and those trials and tribulations, know that we're stretched. We're being stretched, prepared. We'll come out on the other side. Everything will be all right. It'll come out for the good. We'll be there to comfort others. You know, it's, I'm sharing these questions, moments of disbelief, and when those moments will come, pray, Lord, Father, please help me with my unbelief. Tell your brothers and sisters, those that can comfort you, those that can encourage you, don't carry it inside. Don't be a, full of despair. Fear and worry. Know that you're being stretched. It could be intentional. God's got a plan for me. 
God's got a plan for all of us. I'm not sure what that is, but he's preparing us. He can use these times of trials and tribulations to get us stronger. You're being stretched. No matter how the outcome comes, you feel like you're falling. Get up. Get up. Keep going. As it says in James 4, count it all joy in times of trials and tribulations. Because it, and persevere. Perseverance produces character, produces patience, and on the other side, we receive the crown, the crown of righteousness. Amen. Church, we're the community, the body of Christ. I'm not sure what that looks like or what you may be going through, and, and maybe you're not going through anything at this time, but if you are, just fall on your knees and pray. Get the lesson. Get the value. We develop under pressure. You know, I look at this and this illustration. I knew when I was ordained that I knew that there was going to be some, some molding, some developing. I thought of the potter. The potter that takes the clay and forms it. I know he's not massaging it. He's forming it. Form it, and then once it takes shape, then what does he do? He puts it in the oven. Sometimes we feel like we're in the oven. Sometimes we feel like we're in the oven and, and, and just, and just want to get out. Don't get out. Madrak, Shadrach, Ebedenegal. They were in the fire. King Ebenezer commanded his, his soldiers to put him in the fire. They opened up the fiery furnace, and they were burnt. It was so hot. But he put them in the fire, and then the, and then the, the other guards said, but we put in three, but we see four. God is with us. Jesus is with us. Don't be afraid of the fire. You're being shaped. We're being formed. I tell you, it's not easy when you're going through it, but God has a purpose. He has a purpose for our life. What is your purpose? Are you still in the bleachers? Or are you in the game? Jesus and John commanded his disciples. He said, I must go away. But don't, don't fret, don't worry. I'll send you another the counselor, though. The counselor, the Holy Spirit, you will go on to do even greater things than these. That's pretty perplexing. But it's his promise. If we're going to do these things, sometimes we have to be stretched. We're not meant to go through these things on our own strength, but through the strength of the Holy Spirit. When you're being stretched and you feel that despair, call upon the Holy Spirit. Ask for the peace that transcends all understanding. Ask for the comfort. Ask for the counsel of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who dwells within all of us. All of us that believe in Christ has the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus inside us. Ask for the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Because we're passing through and it's important for us to continue to do it. Jesus commanded us to do. Sometimes you go, I, I, as, I, as I go through this tribulation, and I wonder, well, is this for a purpose? What's the purpose? You know, we try to figure it out. I was raised up with this notion that, you know, being the man and being the, the head of the household and being the provider, I was supposed to figure it all out. That's how I was raised. I was supposed to figure it all out. I was supposed to persevere. I was supposed to power through. I felt as if I was supposed to do it on my own. No, we're not. We do it amongst, we do it with each other. We do it with the body. We do it with the community. We carry each other's burdens. As Jesus said, as God said, as God said lay your burdens on me, I'll make, and lay your yoke upon me, I'll make your burdens light. But that's what we do. We do that for Christ. 
we do that. So as I try to figure things out, you know, it's like, God, you try to ask for more details. Can I get a few more details? What's going on here? And then all of a sudden, you might get another piece of the puzzle. But it's probably about a 10,000-piece puzzle. We just don't get enough to comfort us sometimes. We'll never get more than we can handle. But what I think I can handle and what God thinks I can handle are two different things, obviously. Because it's a lot. It's a lot, but I can stand here right now and claim victory. Because my God is a sovereign God. Capable and able of doing all things. Praise God. So church, I tell you, don't go at it alone. Don't go at it alone. I know it gets heavy, but I'm here to tell you that everything will be all right. And I'm not here to tell you because I think so. I'm telling you because the word of God says so. All things work together for the good. It's a promise. It's a promise. This life is but a vapor. We're just passing through. Please follow with me in Hebrews 10, 22 through 25. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, that the assurance that faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. It's in the word. It's there. We're to encourage each other. And I praise God and I thank God for my brothers and sisters that have been there to encourage me. The ones that have helped me avoid those fleeting thoughts of giving up. I praise God for those people. I praise God for my adoptive parents, Ed and Linnell. I know Linnell had said one time, she's like, I'm old. What, what else could God do with me? He's doing a lot with her. She continues to lift me up. Ed and Linnell continue to be godly counsel for me. We need that godly counsel. Biblically, it says, seek out godly counsel. Whatever you're going through, sometimes we need that counsel. Sometimes marriages need that counsel. And if you do need that counsel, I suggest you find some Christian counsel. But we need that sometimes. It's okay. God has something for all to do. He can comfort us. He comforts us through others. I can tell you how many times my spiritual mentors, my adoptive parents have counseled me and made me capable of counseling others. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm being stretched, but it's okay because I know it'll come out for the good. And at a time where I may not have been 100% convinced that I'd be okay with the outcome, even though it wasn't an outcome I didn't want, I'm getting there. And sometimes we have to go through some things to get there. Some, it's like practice. Sometimes you can't really get good until you get in a situation. And I praise God for it now. Because it's going to be all right. This is temporary. Because if I allow it to frustrate me, if I allow it to tire me, how can I serve? How can I have the energy and the mental, the mental energy and the ability to serve? We're here to serve. 
deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily and follow Jesus to serve. We're in this together. Praise God. I'd like to, well, I'm going to share one other little meme, and I'm not sure who wrote this or where it came from. Somebody just sent it to me via text, and it says, sometimes you have to let go of the picture of what you thought life would be like and learn to find joy in the story you're living. Oof. Sometimes you have to let go of the picture of what you thought life would be like and learn to find joy in the story you're living. That's not easy. But I'm doing it. And I tell you one thing. My joy comes from the Lord. My joy comes from being here with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, the body of Christ. That's my joy. You bring me joy. You bring me hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I've heard people share their testimonies. They know what I'm going through. They ask me, how you doing? And I'm like, well, okay. Because Mark wants to preach the sermon. Don't just say good. Tell the truth. Sometimes I say, just good enough. But tell the truth. And then people share their testimonies. They share how they persevered, and it gives you hope. Don't hold it inside. Share it. Lay it upon your brothers and sisters. Lay it upon God. I'd like to close with the last scripture. I love this scripture. Scripture of promise. Scripture of, nothing, of, of complete hope. A scripture that gives me complete joy. It comes from Revelations. Revelations 21, 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I know the holy city the new Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared as a bride, as a, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her groom, her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And he will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Praise God. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Amen. That's a promise, church. It doesn't matter what you may be going through now being stretched it doesn't matter what you're going through now it'll be all right it may not feel good but it all comes out together for the good for you all that are called according to his purpose father in heaven i thank you father god for your promise i thank you for the body of christ church I thank you for coming and meeting us where we are. I thank you for your son who died upon the cross for the, for the forgiveness of our sins, the redeeming blood of Christ, which is available for all that believe. For God, for Jesus is the way. He's the only way. I, I, I thank you for the opportunity and for the promise that we can spend eternity up there with you and Jesus sitting at your right hand. Oh, Father, whatever we go through, I thank you for what you're going to move, and how you're going to move in our lives. I thank you for the, your, your unconditional love. I thank you for loving me and loving us like you can, no more than you can ever love us, no matter what we do. Your unconditional love, grace, and mercy, unforced rhythms of grace. Thank you, Father. And when this life here on earth is over, 
Father, I plead and pray that you'll look down upon me and all of us and say, my good and faithful servant, job well done. May God bless you and keep you.